This is Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com. It is July 2nd, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me tonight is Ethan Moses. Hello! And, and a couple buddies that Well, that sounded actually. very Josh Lee. Uh, I, don't, I think Jeff Goldblum's yeah. kicking you off the alien ship, if that's uh, how you're going to talk to us. Do you want to try again? Why? I don't know. Jeff! <laughs> Jeff! Jeff! You son of a bitch! Jeff, Jeff, what are you doing? Uh, so, well, speaking of Jeff, just for everybody who's out listening right now, uh, we just look up every Jeff Goldblum and Conan O'Brien interview. Um, <laughs> the most hilarious shit on the internet, stop, as far as I'm concerned. Well, stop listening or watching this show. Go watch that other stuff. Yeah, don't. Yeah, that Press stuff is. It, we're not saying funny. you have to come back, but just go watch that other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but if you don't come back, you'll miss Aaron McNeil's debut. What's up, Aaron? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Stars and Stripes is my new nickname. That's a long nickname. Is it? Is it? <laughs> it makes my name longer. <laughs> you know what we should call this guy? The same thing we call the flag. <laughs> <laughs> the Aaron, the Star Spangled bl- Banner is glorious when it's waving in the wind, McNeil. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't shorten it or anything. <laughs> um, before we get to the video games, gentlemen, uh, Aaron, you went on a big vacation. Tell us stories yeah. of the real life. I... Packed up my 3DS and Animal Crossing to travel <laughs> across the country, <laughs> going to the mountains of the Smokies, the national park there in Tennessee, and then play Animal Crossing there and ignore my wife. No, actually, <laughs> we went on a hike. It had me going. Yeah, we went on a hike. We went to the top of uh, the tallest peak in the national park, Clingman's Dome. You walk half a mile up the hey observation yo. tower. Okay. Hey. <laughs> and we got some pictures. It it was really good. It was it was invigorating. It got the old the blood pumping, the legs moving. It made me really anticipate not walking anymore and actually playing my games. <laughs> but yeah, we went. On, we did a lot more hiking that day. Realized we don't like to hike so much all in one. <laughs> you, you, you always. One you know what? You know movie? when you realize you hate hiking, it's about halfway through hiking. Yeah, when you get to the destination and you have to hike back, yep, you hate yep. hiking. <laughs> Always hate hiking oh. when you're halfway done. Yeah, so we're like, no more hiking, we'll just relax. I rode a horse named Red Bull, and he was at the back of the pack. He was really slow. The name was Ironic. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> but it, he was a he was a good horse. Is calling a, bull, a horse a bull an insult to the bull or to the horse? I, maybe the bull. Uh, I don't know. If they had a bull... Well, it depends. What are, you, what are you looking for? Speed or strength? <laughs> or intensity? You know? Don't call a horse a mule. That's insulting. That's insulting to the mule. Yep. <laughs> and the horse. JPT wants to know if you screamed cock wine from the top of the mountain. Well, no. I mean, there are other people, their families there. They wouldn't get there's it. There's fucking bears, too. <laughs> yeah, but that, what if they did get it? What if that I 10 year old that 10 year old next to you was like a Horrible Night super fan? And you just had no idea. First of all, you should not be watching these shows when we make cock wine references, little boy. But <laughs> We need a parental warning before all these shows. <laughs> and we need to market cock wine. We need to get t-shirts out there so I'll know who knows of this already. Then I can yell That's true. Wine That's a good faces. reason to do t-shirts. So it, it, it's an icebreaker. Like, we don't have to just weirdly approach people <laughs> to see, ask them if they like us without, yeah. you know, just based on... We have the t-shirt warning. This could work out. I'll go cockwine, and they'll be like, cockwine, and then we'll know. We'll that high is, five. That is the worst password system ever. <laughs> you you got to have a, a secret phrase. What is the proper answer to cockwine? Show me your buffkins. Yes, me your please. Bumpkins. Oh, yes. dude, you're going to get yourself into some tricky situations. There's <laughs> neighborhoods in Berlin uh, that if, you, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're you know, advertising such things, you're going to be in trouble. So just be, be cautious. <laughs> Are those neighborhoods full of sexual offenders? Um, full of sex, but I, I mean, and and, and it's maybe sex offensive to some. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anything else going on, Aaron? Uh, when we got back, I decided to take an extra day off of work because my body hurt so much that we went and saw Monsters University, and for a prequel to a movie that came out so many years ago, it was not bad. I mean, it's like a typical it's a hell of a uh, review. Yeah, it was not bad. Good job, Pixar. I'll do it again. Yeah. It was uh, it was pretty much like any kind of adult college movie where stuff happens, but it's dumbed down for kids. 
and it's appropriate for them, but they'll make the occasional joke that you're like, ha ha, I get it, if this was more of an adult situation. Yeah. But I had fun. It was nice to know Billy Crystal still gets work. <laughs> I think this is his first work in a while outside of <laughs> you just, Oscar. They up, yeah, they freeze him. <laughs> they should. Just, they thaw him out for when they need to have Mike Wazowski talk. Yeah. Well, is what? your thunderstorm happening? That's Yeah, that's on. That's back here. So we're getting some oh, atm- okay. atmosphere. Holy shit, that's <laughs> awesome. What did you think, yeah, what'd you think really was cool. happening? Yeah. It was the wrath of well, Billy Crystal. Well, I thought one of you guys was like struggling to like live. Like I really <laughs> thought someone's heart was going to burst out of their chest. I was really concerned, but I didn't know if I should have been, you know? So, <laughs> uh, I was struggling to praise Billy Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, po- podcasters have heart attacks after praising Billy Crystal. <laughs> uh, while we're talking about some Pixarness, I rewatched The Incredibles for the first time and... I don't know, five years. It's a damn good superhero movie. I don't care. I don't care how you shake shake it. So, man, that is a that storm is, <laughs> and that storm is here. <laughs> so, yeah, you know what happens when the stream goes down. Um, but it it holds up. It's um it's interesting to go back and watch some of the older and now that this is one of the older Pixar movies and just see, um, as as someone who wanted to originally do computer graphics animation movie stuff yeah you never know how that stuff is going to hold up you know the first toy story can look a little bit rough the first uh a bug's life looks really rough um but the incredibles is not showing its age yet the incredibles looks like they've styled they stylized it more so it might it might be a little bit more timeless than some of the other ones but man um it's also just funny just to again um i think it was funny like 10 years ago to kind of point at Samuel Samuel L. Jackson's like IMDB <laughs> history and see all the random movies that he's been in, but he keeps doing that and just um, seeing him in The Incredibles and now as Nick Fury, that just kind of, uh, it's kind of I connected the characters uh, that when I was watching it it was weird um, <laughs> and then I, then I finally got caught up, watched all of Mad Men, I don't I know, Aaron, you watch this show quite a bit. Yes, I do. The only thing I'll say about Mad Men is, for whatever reason, I've really liked the last two seasons, and I don't think that they don't seem to be the more popular seasons. But I will happily, happily admit, like the like, the more like broader themes of Mad Men, I never understand what is actually going on on the show, but I still enjoy it. So sounds about right. <laughs> I watched the ending and like. <laughs> You know, just trying to dodge Twitter while it, while it's going on, as I usually watch it the day after. Um, you fill in the blanks, and I I was trying to dodge spoilers, but it's just like I don't know if it could have been spoiled for me because I don't really know what to react to. I just enjoy the character so much that you kind of stop caring, and it's kind of I don't know, kind of refreshing to have a show like that for me. Like that, I I'm not watching every detail, but I just want to see. Um, you know, um, the clothes, right? Right. I know <laughs> the clothes. Uh, the I just want to see, I just want to see Roger Sterling be Roger Sterling. That's pretty much the only reason I watch the show. So, uh, yeah, but the anyway. characters are really great. They're fun to watch. And, uh, regardless of what is actually happening on that show, it's, it's like, who cares? Don Draper is going to have a drink as soon as he gets to work. Yeah. And he's going to, he's going to cheat on his wife with somebody. <laughs> yeah. He's not a very good husband. Not, Not at all. Re- most people aren't. <laughs> most of the men on that people. show are just horrible. Yeah. Well, terrible it's, it's, it's funny. Aubrey Aubrey watches that show. Uh, my wife Aubrey, and um, she always she likes it, but she's always really mad at the end because she's like, I just I don't, I just that fucking glass ceiling is fucking bullshit. <laughs> and like I'm just like, Why are you, it's, it's it's over. Like you know, like things <laughs> things are a little bit better now. Um, you know, it's fine. She's like, I know. I just if I was back, I just fucking kill those guys or just at least punch them. Whoa. So she's always really Whoa. angry. And I'm like, but then I watch an episode of it. And I'm like, yeah, dude. Like this shit really happened. Like there was a time this stuff like actually happened. And it was like 40 years ago that yeah. you could walk up and smack a woman on the butt and go. Let's fuck, sugar. And then, like, it's fine. Like, that's an okay thing. I would watch your version of Mad Men. I was going to say, every man on Reddit would, like, exist. Like, everybody on Reddit right now wishes they existed in the 1960s because it, just, it, would fit their, it would fit their way of handling women much better. Oh, it's so funny, though. I've seen people say, like, oh, I wish I could just go back to the Mad Men time. And then whenever I hear them say that, I'm like, well, the only black guy I saw was, like, in an elevator going up and down all day. So maybe I don't want to go back. <laughs> 
<laughs> we had job security, I guess. People always Jeez. went up the stairs. <laughs> The glory days, man. The glory days. Of the I was gonna say, so, do you think there's a warning on time machines that, uh, you know, uh, if you're a woman or a black man, please stay away from the 60s, the 50s, and every, day, every year before that? I hope so. You're not so. going to have a fun time. <laughs> you might want to go into the future. Yeah, the future is going to be better for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a whole other version of Back to the Future that got canned before it got... <laughs> got filmed so yeah, wait a minute never, this isn't gonna back. work <laughs> so, dude, so marty mcfly was actually a, a black guy in the original script <laughs> and they were like okay what what time period could we send them back to that people didn't like just treat him like complete shit and they were like well a week ago we're gonna have to we're gonna <laughs> week. Oh, yeah literally yeah oh i hate white people so oh, <laughs> uh tell me about zombies ethan um, so I finally saw uh, World War Z, uh, or maybe not finally, it just came out. So I saw it within um, a couple uh, couple days. Uh, Brad Pitt, uh, man, handsome guy. Damn, does that guy age? <laughs> Holy no, shit! No. Um, so I went with my wife. Have sex with Angelina just... Jolie, you're you no longer age. Well, yeah, that's probably true. But I, I, he he had sex with Aniston too, so he's ultra not aged. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I can only I, I can only imagine that the uh, well anyway I won't get into that, but. Um, so I went with my wife, uh, which is always <laughs> tricky when uh, going to a zombie movie because usually uh, 99% of the time she's not going to like it. She actually really liked the movie. Hmm. Um, and I, I, I know everyone who read the book yeah. um, says it's not – it's nowhere near the same. What? It okay. isn't. When, when can – have we hit a point where people just aren't allowed to say that anymore? Can, it just, can we just assume that the book is going to be different or better than what we're about to watch? But you know what? I'm about to watch this. So shut the fuck up. That's, that's exactly what <clears> – <throat> that was the debate <laughs> I, I had with somebody on Reddit. A very quick debate. Uh, it was World War Z, the book. Uh, there, was, there was a lot to it. So obviously you can't – you know, it's not like a Jurassic Park where, you know, uh, Jurassic Park was adapted for the screen. So it wasn't like ultra violent, you know, mm. uh, so the kids could go see it because dinosaurs and whatnot. But like World War Z um, is, is a is a big book in terms of its scope. There's no way you could make a movie like that. Um, and, the, and the fact of the matter is, let's be honest here. The reason that people didn't like it was because Brad Pitt was in it. And, and for some reason, Brad Pitt is seen as this like he did horrible, kinda, yeah. like awful. Ma- I love Brad Pitt. You see Brad Pitt in a movie, Johnny Depp in a movie. It, it may not be like the most intelligent movie on the planet. It may not be a movie that's going to you know stick with you for the rest of your life. It's going to be a decent movie. Can They're somebody make well. a movie with all the crazy characters that Depp and Pitt have played and then <laughs> somehow their world intersects? And That would be an amazing fucking movie. <laughs> it's like all, like, like all of the, the, like the, Pitt, the Pitt and the Depp universes, you know, kind of like the Marvel universes, like the multiverse of Pitt and Depp all comes together. <laughs> Um, to fight uh, the multiverse of Skeet Ulrich. Um, I don't know why. I just think to me that seems like just, you know, because Skeet Ulrich, is, he's, a, he's a poor man's Johnny Depp. I mean, everyone knows that. Um, but Where anyway, does Cage fit into all this? Where does Nicolas the... Cage fit in? Oh, yeah, they Man's should Brad fight Nicolas Cage. They should fight all the crazy Nicolas Cage characters. <laughs> oh, shit. That sounds like an awesome movie. Uh, you know, I know that we're going to talk about game pitches. I was going to say, I think we've keep this in mind. <laughs> Let's keep this in mind. Um, but, but anyway, uh, I, I recommend it, actually. Um, I, I thought it was a good movie. Uh, the, the zombies themselves, probably the scariest zombies, not in terms of, like, because uh, it wasn't a very bloody movie, and it mm-hmm. wasn't like, the, you know, there's some jump scares and stuff like that. But these are the fastest, like, fucking things on the planet, and they come in waves. Like, not I, not, I don't mean, like, waves as in, oh, one right after the other. They look like, like human waves. And it looks a little bit silly at times, but it's kind of cool. And, I mean, zombies feel more like a force of nature as opposed to just humans that, you know, had a bad day and want to eat you. Um, but uh, I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was a fine movie. It didn't, uh, you know, I... Is it my favorite zombie movie on the planet? No, but it, they did they did well. It's fine. It did they did a good job. I know they're gonna have to make a shit ton of money to make any money on that because yeah. uh, they had all kinds of issues. But uh, I, hey, bring bring so, Pitt into more horror movies. I'll take him. So which part of Ethan likes this? Like, is this? I was I guess I was put off in the trailer by some of the special effects, like the the whole like surging horde of zombies, like whatever that little 
effect that makes them look like they're like a wave of zombies. Yeah. Um, really put me off. And so I'm just, I guess my question is, did you, did the part of you that likes the Resident Evil movies like this movie or was it another part of you? This was the part of me that likes disaster movies. Okay. I mean, this, that's what this is. This is a disaster movie. Uh, most uh, zombie movies I would consider to be uh, dramas oh, uh, interesting. or like horror movies. That helps. This was yeah. this was a this was dramatic, but it was more like, I mean, it felt more like uh, Armageddon or something like that, you know? Hmm. Because I mean, these zombies were just they were I mean they were insanely <gasps> like difficult that's to take what... down. I mean, it was it was it was kind of a cool that it's. Their take on the genre was interesting, um, and it was intense as fuck. You know, now, so. I, now I just want Aerosmith to do, to do a song for it. <laughs> oh, they did. <laughs> sure. No, I, I just they, <laughs> they are. But, uh, but yeah, no, it was it was. I I, I will say that the zombie. I used to think that the zombies from the uh, Dawn of the Dead remake were the zombies that I didn't want to ever encounter. Yeah. Uh, Change that. <laughs> completely it's these ones i mean these these are fucking intense they they don't take no for an answer so uh, that was pretty cool huh. um but then what uh I, I, okay I, i'm gonna talk about it again that's fine i'm so fucking excited for pacific rim it's not even funny like i like i'm so excited for, i've watched the trailer so many fucking times it's not even funny um and i got i bought the prequel comic because i was just like i can't like i've done everything you could possibly do in anticipation for pacific rim except for order the action figures which i'm fucking <laughs> inches away from, i was gonna say like, why have you inches done away from doing uh you know in 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 amazon i have like you know i've check marked or i've you know kind of reserved the uh the two two action figures the uh, chinese uh jaeger and the american jaeger um, and then also the Jaeger is the what, what the mechs are called. It means hunter oh. in German. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, just yeah, yeah. I wanted to make sure everyone knew that. But uh, there's also a movie book uh, that shows all the background and, and all that kind of stuff. And then I made my own mech on Monday, which there's actually an app um, that you know you can get and make your own mech. And they don't look awesome, but you know it's fine. I mean, I have like absorbed as much out of this movie as I possibly can. I, I want it to come out so much. And the prequel comic. <laughs> um, got me even more excited. Like I'm like, oh god damn it! Like this is gonna be so fucking awesome. Aaron, have you ever been so excited for something where you re- read the prequel comic for it? I will never know this feeling. Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm excited for the movie though, Ethan. I just oh my gosh, I was it's just trying to think about that. How many times has I been like this? Oh, I, I, I like like I can't remember a game for a long time, a game or a movie that I've been like this pumped up for you know and um I, I think it's just because i mean you know i, I love guillermo del toro uh, i can't pronounce his name or shit but i, lo- I love everything that he Guillermo. Does. I know, guillermo. G- um g-, g g you know uh g my, my g guillermo g- 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 uh, i love guillermo i love i've loved every movie he's done um and the fact that he's he loves monsters like this guy is obsessed with monsters and he's gonna do <laughs> monsters right you know what i mean yeah. um and there's mechs, fucking yeah. gigantic mechs, 300 foot fucking mechs, and like, and basically, there's already people. And again, I, I you know, I'm I'm gonna be really chipper today on the the podcast because the last one we did, I was kind of, I think maybe a little bit angry. <laughs> I don't know why. You did um, start off bashing the entire person. internet. I was like, yeah, I was like, <laughs> we're we're live streaming on the internet. <laughs> Well, I, I'm gonna bash real quick Reddit one more time because I hate you, but I love you at the same time. There's already people like, "Oh, this is so inaccurate. A robot that size will <laughs> vibrate to pieces." What do you and, know about the science of giant sea creatures? Yeah, and, or I, just, like, and I just say like it, the same people that were upset about the uh, the you know lack of science with World War Z uh, are the same people that are gonna hate this idea of Pacific. A uh, rim. Uh, just don't go to it. Then I don't want to fucking hear you talk like during the moving out. Uh, uh, your exoskeleton would crush. I mean, no, f- you know, come on, come on. <laughs> I mean, they had, there was a big article that came out when Godzilla came out. They were like, oh, that could never happen. Oh, okay. of course it couldn't happen. We don't make movies about shit that could happen. <laughs> well, some people do. You know, that shit's boring. You know. Well, the Power Rangers but, uh, happened. That's a bunch of people inside of a mech, and that worked. So exactly, anything is possible. <laughs> You can explain giant things in one way or another. You know, we're clever, you know, so... Uh, but, oh, but besides wait. that... I like JPT's idea. Every time a Jaeger shows up in Pacific Rim, do a shot of Jaeger. Um, you can't... You know what? The funny thing about that is they serve alcohol in the movie theaters here, so you could oh, very well do that. Um, and uh, and so, is it like they serve Jaegermeister like it's water, right? 
I mean, um, it's everywhere for it's, free. I mean, I mean, it's cheaper than water. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, <laughs> it's not free, but you know, you buy a Jaeger card at the be- beginning of the month, and then you just you know you get it stamped. <laughs> That's all we do. Every know? ten Jaegers get one free. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I'm excited for that. Me too. Me too. J- yeah. <laughs> I- how have they? How is there not an awesome video game promoting this? Uh, movie there, there's going to be one that's going to be uh, released simultaneously with the movie. Uh, I'm sure yeah. it's going to suck. Yeah, mm. I forget who's doing it, but I, I don't. Re- I mean, they just make your Rock'em Sock'em Robots game, but uh, put these monsters and giant robots in there for now. Yeah. All right, on to video games. Starting with new releases. Uh, since we didn't podcast last week, I didn't get to ask you, Ethan. Uh, Company of Heroes two. Where is that on your playlist? Um, it's it's sitting there. Okay. Um, I'm looking at it. I'm eyeballing it. I I just I don't know. I haven't made the. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with me. In yeah, that, that was. Those... I don't know why I'm not as excited about it right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, I want. I think keep... it's because it's tough to find people to play with. Sometimes you know? I bring you on here just so you can you can think about things a little a little deeper. Yeah. So oh, I will. That's out there. That's calling your name. Mm-hmm. Um. So that came out last week. Um. The big release of this week has to be. It's re- I really scraped the barrel for this. <laughs> um, <laughs> a game called Dark. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, it what comes is out, that? Uh, it's a vampire uh, character game. action stealth game thing. <laughs> I have no I, idea. Know, it looks really, want... really generic and it's like 30 bucks. So Yeah, it, it looks has, rough. <laughs> and they shoved it out the week of July 4th. Uh, yeah. Mortal Kombat for PC. Uh, if I resist buying this, I'll be surprised. I, I kind of, after doing my Injustice playthrough of the story, I kind of want to do this with Mortal Kombat, but I need to find I need to find a buddy to uh, uh, commentate with me. So um, if that happens, that's why I'll pull the trigger on that purchase because that's still I think I I think I gave that a five star review on on 360. So mm-hmm. um, yeah. that story mode is fantastic. It was uh, really good. It uh, looks like Sword of the Stars, The Pit, uh, has an expansion this week called Mind Games. Ethan, I know you played that game a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I'll revisit that game. Um, I wouldn't say it's the strongest roguelike out. There's plenty of things, but I'll see what this expansion does. Uh, we we did a we played that yeah uh, a while back, a long time ago. So we have some of that uh, footage out there. But uh, yeah, I mean it's not a bad game, but just compared to you know Dungeons and Dreadmore, uh, it's tough to play one when you have the other sitting there looking at you. So we'll see. Chat saying that um, the developer of Dark is Ukes, who makes all the WWE games. So <laughs> at least they got to do something else. Um, yeah. The virtual console release of the week on the Wii U is the original Pilot Wings. Good. Mm. Oh yeah. boy. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> uh, I think Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network maybe um, are getting. Uh, just generic co-op shooter called Scourge Outbreak, which is a re-release of some Scourge game that came out for PC in like 2010 and got really mm-hmm. panned. So that's 10 bucks if you absolutely have to shoot something and uh, want to do that in, as co-op and are ignoring Borderlands 2 for some reason right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, which is stupid. <laughs> Big release week. I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this segment on Night Force for the next few few weeks. Oh, man. It's going to be... Uh, There's going to be a lot of learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At least I, all I'm asking is if you're going to release a game and you don't really care about it, at least give it a funny title so we can get some comedy out of it. So Secret Ponchos. <sighs> but that's going to be a good game, right? I hope so. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, what have you been playing, Aaron? I have been playing something that you have also been playing, and oh, every, maybe everyone should play, and it's shit. called Rogue Legacy. Shit. Shit. Okay, I've written and about that... this I've, <laughs> twice now, and I have the game curious up, so tell me your Rogue Le- Legacy tales. So, I I think I was introduced to this game by just some random dude on Twitter uh, a week before it came out, before okay. I went on my vacation. I downloaded the demo, and I was like, oh... I wonder how this plays on keyboard and mouse, and I realized that is that is a bad idea. <laughs> so I put a controller in, and I'm like, this game seems pretty good, 2D kind of Castlevania Metroid-like mm-hmm. game, and you're probably gonna die really fast. Come back as a child that just has wonky traits, and so I'm like, yeah, it seems kind of goofy. I'll check it out. But I was sold when I was born, like 
after my first character died, I was born again as a lady, a gay lady dyslexic paladin. Mm -hmm. And did you have a beard? And I don't know if I had a beard or not. I, <laughs> I love I the ladies beard. with beards. Ladies yeah. with beards are great. And also the ladies with beards in this game. Yeah. If you're bald and you have a beard, <laughs> I don't know if that actually works out. But I was like, this is great. And then, of course, like almost maybe everyone else playing the game, you get the gay trait. And you're like, oh, I wonder what that actually does to the character. And you God. realize it does absolutely nothing. Which which one? <laughs> one is awesome. And two, I feel like such an ass when we were playing that game live. Because, <laughs> like, I... You know, I'm getting into all the traits. I'm like, so what does this do? And, like, I'm just making all these presumptions about, yeah. oh, maybe he's running different, or maybe he's holding the sword differently. <laughs> and I was like, God. And, then, and then later it's just like, oh, man, that's that's the no. dangers of playing live. I didn't mean it, but it's fucking genius that it does nothing. That's awesome. That is one of the best <laughs> things about that game. It just pulls out, like, the worst in a person not to say anything bad about you, Justin, but yeah, you you assume most of the yeah. traits actually do something, and you're like, oh, maybe something really tiny or minuscule is happening to my character. I just don't notice it yet, and it's like, no, the character is <laughs> gay. That's just the thing we're telling you. Yeah, it changes. And that's nothing. okay. Yeah, that's okay, is right? Is that and we're all? Fine. Same yeah, and yeah that's exactly. fine. And that's why I'm like, I love the game. Well, I mean, she was dyslexic, so that was giving me a good laugh trying to actually read what she was reading, but. Yeah, the fact that she was gay, I was like, I just gotta talk to someone. I went and told my wife, I'm like, she won't care. And I'm like, the paladin is gay and it does nothing. <laughs> I'm buying this game. You just, ex like, come out of your office and she's sitting on the couch and you just exclaim at her with with no preface at all. The paladin yeah. is gay the and it does nothing. Gay. It and does nothing. <laughs> and I just leave the room. <laughs> And she's like, ah, video games. Why did I oh. marry this man? Yeah, what are you doing with your life? <laughs> Jesus. She's like, oh, no. But yeah, it's a great game. I yeah. put about maybe eight, nine hours into it uh, over the past weekend. What level are you at now? I am in the 70s, last mm -hmm. I remember. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah so uh, I've in died a lot. the high 50s. <laughs> yeah, so we're, you're not that far behind me, but mm. yeah, I've died a lot, spent my gold. It's just a lot of fun. It's just... You're doing the same thing over and over again, but the procedural way that a castle is built and the, the way the story is led out to you through the journals of a prince, and that you can every time you come back, you just find like the next number of the journals. So you're getting stories. So I kind of feel like I'm slacking because the prince has already killed like three of the bosses oh, in really? the game. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> journals are a little bit ahead. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. But That's watching fun, his yeah. mental breakdown, some it's a really great story just for how simple this game is. Yeah, well, and, 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 good. I I just downloaded it uh, during my stream um, <laughs> earlier today. I downloaded it and I put an hour and a half into it really quickly, and I was kind of pissed that I had to stop because we had to do a podcast tonight. I was like, oh well, <laughs> at least I get to stop or get to talk and 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 play and and or talk about it and play it later on maybe. Uh, and uh, you know the thing that I think is so genius about some of these roguelike games um, is this. Um, the, the fact is is you are doing the same thing over and over again and it is punishing but but they're giving you just enough of a nugget to keep going and, and yeah. the whole prospect of upgrading the castle um, and your characters are getting you know slightly more you know powerful as you go which kind of takes that edge off of like the straight you know rogue like game that just I mean you just you start out with nothing or you start out with random stats and I think that that's a really good like I like that happy medium uh, but holy Definitely. shit is that game punishing and the most punishing thing is that fucking downward sword um, yeah the way that they yeah. set up that down attack is you have to learn just how it works and sometimes even after you've learned it you still make the mistake yeah, I of, suck with that thing oh thinking yeah. oh once I put the sword down it's staying down until I hit the ground or an enemy and no you'll pull it back up and just screw yourself over just every yeah. time <laughs> Yeah, that the timing of that aspect is. But I, I, I met, I fought, I met my first boss and got my ass kicked. <laughs> like, Giant eyeball. Shit. Oh my god. Yeah, it was, it was bad. I like, I like the random elite characters that you run across too. Those always, I guess, just every run there's some there's. You know, I, w I don't, I won't say there's something new every run, but there's just there's some standout feature every run that always makes me enjoy that run or like makes yeah. me laugh because it killed me and. Yeah, it's it. A, I played a ton of it, and it's the first game I've had in a while where, when I'm not done, when I'm not playing it, I'm thinking about it. 
Mm-hmm. Like, like, more so than... I mean, it's crazy. It's more more so than Bioshock and The Last of Us have even done for me this year. It's... it's I just... It was all I was thinking about all weekend. It's like, I just want to play more of this. I want to play more of this. It's just has the right amount of progression and addiction versus versus the grinding and, and then made the grinding fun and man this thing is it's easily the you know we, we praised the binding of isaac quite a bit when it came out i feel like it's the good it's the binding of isaac of 2013 in that it's yes. something you can play for hours and grind through but it's also a great just like 10 15 minutes just do a couple do, yep. do two runs and then put it down and come back to it and um, you always feel like you're making progress. It's it's uh, and it's also I feel like it's a brilliant um, take on roguelikes. Like it just used all the all the really positive aspects of roguelikes and made it not so um, soul crushingly hard or just you know it just won't completely leave you with nothing. But at the same time, yeah. each run is kind of its own thing. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah. different that it's there's a skill based component in addition to the randomness, and you can you know you have got somewhat more control of it, but the skill based portion kind of makes up for that completely. And and I, I I'm almost like you know, uh, skill based portion <laughs> for someone like me. I mean, you play Dungeons and Dreadmore, you can you can figure it out, you can take your time and whatnot. This isn't one of those games, so uh, it's a struggle, but it makes me want to. I mean, this is one of those games that makes me want to be better at games to enjoy them to their you know fullest potential um and I, like i really do like i think this is going to be a game that i may be playing for a really long time i got really excited like i'm really mad at you guys that we had to podcast and i, I apologize <laughs> it's really selfish but i mean i was i really got i'm just it. maybe it was my fault i don't know i mean if you had been on top of your game and played this all weekend when it came out you yeah. know so far behind it's kind of oh, on you ethan i was so hungover on saturday that was really <laughs> that was happening <laughs> That's what Thursday's for. Also, yeah. that reminds me, um, just so fans of our podcast know, um, we've had guest alterations to our show uh, two times in the past three weeks due to um, weekends going on a little bit too, a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, and that's saying something when we podcast on Monday and Tuesday nights. So Yeah. Because... <laughs> Um, I, the, yeah, we, we did our top video game podcast this week and Cole had to bail cause he had no voice 24 hours later. So, wow. um, we, uh, we keep it real here. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. What else you been playing, Aaron? Uh, I've also been playing a little bit of gunpoint. I revisited that. I had it sitting around for a while now, also based on the praises of people from the almighty internet and, just something about it. I was I brought it up, I think, in conversation with you, and I'm like, I should play Gunpoint again. Yeah. And I played a little bit more of that, and I really kind of hit a groove with it. I It didn't take me that long to get back into it, and just something about the goofiness of a man that can just launch himself around a building, just sneaking past guards and punching them until you're sick of punching them. I don't know. It's I, I love the all these indie games I have right now, which so, is yeah, like, yeah, like we're saying, like the Bioshock Infinite came out at the end of March. Last of Us came out at the beginning of last month, and yet here I am. I could go on and on, just like giddy talking about games like Rogue Legacy and Gunpoint, just for That's all these cool. little stupid yeah, all these little stupid things they do that just are so much fun, and. Yeah, like no offense, it's like Naughty Dog. They do like a great oh, yeah, game yeah. in The Last of Us, but it Gunpoint <laughs> is a game that should be played, and it it can be played. You just have to have a PC. So every description I've read of this game confuses the hell out of me. So pretty much, help me understand it. So Gunpoint is a game where you are like a sneaky detective who is hired by people to do these odd jobs, which usually take place in one building with uh, any number of floors and you need to usually hack something or retrieve something and then get out and you're judged on how quickly you do it, how silently you do it, how much violence and if you leave any witnesses and your only means of attacking in the beginning seem to be launching yourself. You have this device which causes you to be able to launch yourself any sort of distance (laughs) and then not take any fall damage. So you could climb to the roof of a building, jump off, and hit the ground. You'll make a noise, which will get people's attention, but you won't die. (laughs) 
And the way they set this up in the beginning is funny. I won't spoil that. But you can climb on walls and kind of hang from certain parts of the ceiling. And you guys, you, it's kind of like a weird Mark of the Ninja. That's really? All right. All right. Now you're talking. Puzzly. Now you're talking. Yeah. It's very puzzly. And you gain points every time you finish a mission. You can upgrade your, uh, your launching. You can upgrade how fast it takes you to actually charge up that launch. You is, also it, hack. Okay. Like terminals and can. Is it okay? Is it is this just a terribly named game? Because I don't. Yeah. I get, I get nothing. <laughs> none of this from Gunpoint. Gunpoint. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It. It's not a really bad word to say <laughs> Gunpoint, but it doesn't not describe the game all that well. Well, there's enemies and they have guns. And sometimes they shoot you. So, so they, do they point them at you? They will point the gun at you, and you will die. <laughs> okay. Although accurate. I did have a, yeah, I had a moment where I was like halfway across the room, and a guard had to fire three times at me while I stood still, going, "Oh, I failed this!" Before he actually killed me. It's like a one-shot kill, so sometimes they miss. Um, you know, a 2D plane. You watch some of my some of Stealth Bastard, right? Yes, I saw you play some stuff fast. So yeah, I'm trying to still get a like how do, how does the game feel? Like is it like when you're describing it as Mark of the Ninja a little bit? It just um, like is it kind of floaty? Is it is it tight platforming? Is it? I don't know. It's, it's a little floaty, um, just because of the nature of this device that launches you. You okay. get like a there's a line showing you. Okay, you'll probably go this far at this height and it shows you your trajectory is what I'm looking for. Okay. And so that's usually accurate, but sometimes you'll hit a ceiling and it won't account for like your actual body type. It's just like, oh you'll probably fly in this direction and you'll probably land around here, but I hit a ceiling once and dropped back into a building to where the guard shot me. <laughs> and so it's it's a little loose. It's very forgiving. It's got a very forgiving checkpoint system where okay. you can choose to either go back like two or three seconds, seven or eight, 14 seconds, or just restart the whole damn mission. Oh, wow. That's so, yeah, it's it's, awesome. really robust. it's really robust. It gives you a chance to, you know, instead of you manually saving so far into a level and having like tons of saves just to get through something that should only take you a minute, it just gives you choices. Hmm. Which is funny because one time I went back two seconds, which was when the guy had already spotted me and was attempting to shoot me. <laughs> and I was like, well, I will not go back that far again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the other thing you can do is you can hack into objects, which also leads to funny moments where you can make a light switch open a door as opposed to actually turn off the lights. And so you can really just fuck with the guards <laughs> in a level. I like and that. Yeah, so you, no matter where you are, you can hack things. So you can hack a light switch in a room with a guard who's just kind of chilling out and say that that light switch in his room will open a door that you need to go through. But you'll leave the light switch right next to you as a light switch. You can flip the lights off. The guard will be like, whoa, the lights are off. I'm going to turn them back on. And then he'll open the door for you. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, sometimes that's the way you have to get through, but other times it's just funny to do that. Even though you could have just flipped the switch and opened the door yourself, it's funnier to make the guards let you in. I feel like this game didn't have... Like, some people were talking about it right when it came out, but it didn't have a very long tale of people continuing to talk about it. But it sounds like it's fun. It sounds it sounds pretty fun from your, your description, anyway. Yeah, it's just a really fun, you know, indie game. It's not you're going to break the bank if you want to play it or try it sure, out. There's a yeah. demo out there. But yeah... Even trying to explain it now, it's really hard to just talk about everything within the Did, game and mm. accurately describe what makes it fun. I think the demo is a good avenue to actually see what's in there. But yeah, the name Gunpoint it <laughs> really makes you think, oh, I'm going to play it. I don't know. Yeah, budget. I thought it was like really tactical or I don't – it was – that's not what it, I expected at all. So I find well, it to be more – puzzly and seat of the pants kind of thing yeah oh well, apparently that hasn't affected sales too much because uh it, it's doing pretty well the developer did oh yeah he did really quite well he used to write for pc gamer actually so uh, <laughs> yeah that's true i don't that's have awesome. his name off the top of my head but uh yeah there was a graph um that was put up and it showed like the point where he was like okay i've recouped all of my money and then oh shit i should probably like make a comment about this and then i mean so they there's gonna be He's gonna make more games, so I mean that's a, awesome. That's a cool oh, thing. nice. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 another reason I like indie games. I would those, appreciate those something stories. more from him, but maybe a game that's easier to explain. Yeah, <laughs> but I might make a video of this if I can. 
just because it's kind of related to the the feel good developer story, there was a a post today. Uh, people uh, were talking about the developer behind a Bobo's Grand Big Adventure. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys remember uh, that game a while yeah. back, but he 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 just made or launched a, a um, green light campaign for um, his new game that he's made with his daughter, and it's just like all about like it shows Chibi like night. Yeah, it looks super chibi night. Yeah, it uh, and she did like all the voice work for it, and I don't know, it's 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 a really great pitch video, and just yeah, it's a awesome. really neat story. So, um, I thought I'd throw that in there while we had a chance. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Anything else, Aaron? Uh, of course, you know I can't stop playing the Crossing, old <laughs> Animal Crossing, New Leaf. <laughs> the Crossing. <laughs> the Crossing it, it makes it sound like some show on USA. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say yeah, that or A and E. Geez. <laughs> Characters welcome. The Crossing. Are you are you playing it every day? I attempt to play that game okay. every single day. Oh, uh, I I'd... buy turnips. I. <laughs> I gather fruit, I sell stuff, I dig up fossils every damn day. We won't go into too heavy detail because we are planning on doing a, a checkpoint episode on this and I want to save Ethan's brain. But, um, Ethan, do you have any questions about Animal Crossing New, New Leaf? Because you, nope. this is your opportunity <laughs> no, to talk I, to I two addicts know, right now. I, I get it. I, I get the reason that you guys... I get the reason that you guys like this game and other people like this game is the same reason that I liked... You know, like a Minecraft or a Don't Starve is probably a better example of it. You know, it's just that that you feel like you have to put work into it. But the thing about Animal Crossing, you know, that it's just like it's actually happening. It's actually real time shit. And that's so stressful. Like, I don't know. How can you guys handle that? You've got jobs and and ladies and pets, (laughs) probably. I I had a moment this weekend. uh, Oh, no, it was last weekend when I was about to mow the grass in real life. And I put off mowing the grass because I had to go clean my town, the weeds from growing in my town. Yeah. And I was like, that's... I am I am better. And I think you, you wrote that piece on this, Ethan. I'm better at chores in that game than I am in real life. Yeah. Yep. And that's that's the moment when you realize I've I think I've got my priorities mixed up with how much I'm playing this game. But I can't believe I've stuck yeah. with it. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I just I, I love talking about it. I, it's. It, it's fun, like I said uh, a while back, that it, Twitter is still talking about it. There's always somebody chatting about New Leaf, and New Leaf stories are they're they're just charming and harmless and fun. So yeah, they're just so simple, and it's just kind of you build up more and more of the backstory and what's happening in your town, and mm-hmm. you get attached to the villagers. Like Bones left Justin. Fucking Bones. <laughs> Fucking Bones. <sighs> it is That's left Twitter me. Twitter wearing dog. He just left me with an angry goat named Gruff and this <laughs> monkey that just wants to weight lift all the time. I just can't I can't get a beat on him, but I'm excited because Frank is moving into town tomorrow and I don't know what he's going to be. I'm really hoping that he is a pig. But I think that would uh that I think Frank's a good pig name. Yeah. So <laughs> but more of that uh and in the next two weeks, we'll do a, a curse checkpoint and, and just finally get it all out of our system. We'll leave all the fruit on the table at that point. <laughs> the crossing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, what else you got? I think you got you and uh, Ethan can tag team this one a little bit. All right. So, yeah, Ethan got me excited to play more Borderlands 2. Also, just that Tiny Tina DLC coming out, the Assault on Dragon Keep, or Dragon's yeah. Keep, whatever it's called. And I was still struggling to get through um, Torque's campaign of destruction or explosions. I just can't <laughs> know what these titles are. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I just play the game. I shoot stuff until the credits roll. And I'm like, I'm falling behind on these. Tiny Tina's out. Everyone's singing its yeah. praises. Like, this is the best DLC that Gearbox put out for Borderlands 2. I played the pirate one before that and was kind of like, oh, I can look like a pirate now. But <laughs> that story wasn't all that great. Yeah. And so I was like, well, Ethan's play it. I'll jump in. I'll, you know, spoil myself a little bit. I've now since caught up to that point. So I got to see all the beginning of it. And it is, it is really good. Mm-hmm. If all the DLCs were like this, Borderlands 2 retroactively 
game of the year. Fuck you, Mass Effect Three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the case. So. Yeah. If, if if the entirety of the season pass was in 2012 with the game's release, then that's one hell of a game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, a solid game. Ethan, your review went up today for Tiny Tina, and what stuck out to me was that you compared it to uh, Blood Dragon, which made a lot of sense, but I, I completely had forgotten about Undead Nightmare. And Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's a little bit like the the zombie island, but but even more so that it just it takes a lot more freedom. And I kind of, I don't know, reading descriptions for this uh, DLC, I didn't think it would work. And it just sounds like it works amazingly well. Well, it, it works because it doesn't sound like it can work. I mean, the thing the thing about Borderlands 2 is it's already kind of a crazy game, and they already can... T- I mean, it's not like, you know, with the Red Dead Redemption or Far Cry 3 where, like, them stepping outside their comfort zone is, like, a big deal and it's really noticeable. They had to go above and beyond for Borderlands 2 because it's already a pretty zany game. And, like, when I was writing my article, I, you know... Uh, it, it, my article was at first, you know, like 1,200 words, 1,500 words, and I thought, you know, he, here's the fact of the matter is. Uh, <laughs> I want to be as concise as possible with it because this is what Gearbox... And again, it's tough to, to, to produce these kind of DLCs. You have to have some weak DLCs. I'm sorry. Yeah. You buy a season pass. Um, <laughs> Unless you you're irrational and pass, just don't release them. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It, it just it, like you're gonna have some some weak ones. Um, and and the other DLCs were just good additions. It was more content, you know. Great. This one was um, just all around, just really pleasing. And and again, in a lot of these games, the the lust for loot is what actually energizes you or fuels you to actually play them. And that's not bad. That's not a problem. But what you get into is the fact of the matter is is that game developers think they can just use that. So oh, more yeah. loot you're happy different enemies maybe you're going to level up more but we need a little bit more than that mm-hmm. and this game gave it to you i mean it was a funny game um it was storyline wise it was it was goofy but it was entertaining um i laughed uh, i i actually cr- almost cried a little bit because you deal with uh you know a certain i didn't really cry i don't cry i don't have those emotions um but you know dealing with some things that happen at the end of borderlands 2 we won't spoil that unless you you know since a lot of people haven't yeah, beat it but i, caught a lot I mean of that stuff yeah, yeah. I mean, it was kind of like it, they just went. I don't know. They they went in a direction that uh, was zany, but but still grounded within the universe, and um, everything about it just worked. Like there was, I, like I can't think of an aspect of the game uh, of the DLC that just like I was like, oh, you know, I'm bored of this. I mean, even the fe- I mentioned in the the, uh, the review that the fetch quest. Like I even mm-hmm. wanted to do the fetch quest because it was going to steer me in a direction that maybe I, I had missed, you know. And like I don't think of Borderlands 2 as an adventure game. Um, it does not have the same sort of uh, motivation for you know like digging into every little nook and cranny. Uh, this game did though because there was you know funny stuff doing throughout. Uh, they they gave. Uh, a ton of fan service to to the geeks and all of us, but they also just shredded us to pieces. I mean, and you just kind of realize how silly uh, our 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 geek society that we've created is because they poke fun at all this stuff, this kind of elitist aspect of things, and this they just they played all, all, they they played up a lot of that stuff, but but made it funny and made it fun, and, and so at the end of it, you were like, ah, I'm kind of an asshole, but you're like, but it was fun anyway, you know, and <laughs> just those little digs combined with a story that. Um, actually had like a lot of emotion to it surprisingly <laughs> i mean it's a funny dlc but i mean man there's the end is is not what you would expect and I, i'm not going to spoil anything but it's not what you would expect um and this got me excited for the possibility of the season two which is the the biggest you know thing that i take away from this is that season one dlc for borderlands two it's it was good mm-hmm. uh, this made it great this made it phenomenal this made it worth investing in and and you know Borderlands 2 was one of the you know games that I would definitely invest in a season pass with, um, and I and if season two does come out, which rumored it's rumored to be coming out, um, I'm excited for it because I'm like okay where can they take it from here? Um, also because I don't know how my character can get any more powerful, but even then like in this DLC, you're challenged you know like I like I'm I'm throwing down two turrets right now you know I'm like lighting pe- people up and I'm still not overly powerful so I mean in terms of balancing holy shit like they've uh, wow, they've done a really good job with it. So, I mean, again, there's a lot of thought and love that went into this, and um, a Gearbox, you know, ha- kind of got chewed up a little bit in the past year. Yeah. I'm glad to see that they, you know, came out and they were like, you know, fuck it, whatever, you know, we'll, we'll move past this. So, uh, if you got Borderlands 2, even if you don't 
get any of the other DLC, get, get this. Like seriously, get this. Like you will, you will, awesome. you will thank me for it. Personally, <laughs> you will personally thank me for that. Yeah. <laughs> Send all your fan mail to Ethan in Germany. Yep. So I don't Steel know, Box, Germany. Aaron, how much Borderlands you've played. So did you? Did you beat the main game? I've beaten yeah the main okay. game of Borderlands too. Yeah, because so. I, me, this is just one of those games that is gonna forever suffer from my PC upgrade. Um, <laughs> all these games in limbo that I was three quarters of the way done with on a console and restarting on PC. I don't know what I should do about. I really want to play the Tiny D- Tina stuff, but I have to beat that entire game, and that's like thirty hours away. So. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a really a tough one. I know we started playing through it again, and it might, I don't know if it really goes faster if you have four people, since it does scale. But yeah, yeah, it's it's one of those things where I think it was worthwhile to get through Borderlands Two. I did it solo, but yeah, if you've already started it so much and it had to do all that again. Yep. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm not starting again, but I'd still need to push through. Like, okay. there's still there's still a lot of repetitive content for me, but but I love that yeah. game. Like it. Uh, yeah. it 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 definitely scratches an itch and will be in the rotation for for quite a while, especially because I've always now I've got that even brighter carrot of Tiny Tina out there. So, mm-hmm. yep, it's a good what carrot. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ethan, what else do you have you been playing, man? So um, the other game that uh, I got interested in this past weekend because PC Gamer had uh, just. Threw up, a, threw up a, they threw up a screenshot of what they were playing at that time. They were not throwing up, though I'm sure maybe somebody <laughs> did. Uh, you never know. Um, uh, a game called uh, Zafe House Diaries, uh, which is a... I, be, I guess the best way I can describe it is a single-player kind of pen-and-paper zombie-themed <laughs> RPG put onto the computer. Um, you manage uh, five random uh, characters uh, through a zombie apocalypse... Uh, you manage resources. You just, you just, all the kind of stuff that you would do in a pen and paper type RPG. Um, kind of like the, um, oh geez, the outbreak, uh, undead. Uh, oh man, what was that? What was that? That zombie RPG we we saw it. Uh, that was out, at, yeah, I think it's outbreak under, undead. Outbreak yeah. undead. Um, it's just something very similar to that. Um, and I actually streamed that the other day, uh, uh, quite unsuccessfully. Uh, the stream worked, but um, I, I I didn't do very well in it. Um, but <laughs> I, I, I logged think, in and I was like, "Are you playing a tabletop game?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's I mean that's what it it, it got me really. I, I think the game did two things for me. One, I've been playing games that are just graphically like they don't leave a lot to the imagination in the sense that like I don't really have to think too hard. Like, yeah. Everything that I need to see, I, I'm seeing. You know, I've got. Skyrim and Borderlands 2 it's just like I don't use my imagination a whole lot you know and that's not a bad thing but for someone who like like me who who writes you know both you know for the website and uh, you know I, I write you know the nonfiction, but I, I want to write fiction as well and sometimes when you play games that uh, that scratch is itched you know if we're talking about itching scratches mm. uh, or scratching that's itches that's <laughs> yeah that's yeah but, uh, but, but this game um, did did just that you know it, it is minimalist um there's you know there's some graphics there's some some ambient music some sound effects but like my mind was doing all the work for the most part and it, that it was awesome i mean it was it was a lot of fun um the scenarios that play out are, are you know again they're random but you know you can kind of there's a strategy to it uh which again i failed to to realize um throughout the whole time <laughs> while i was playing um but the other thing it made me really want to do is like play some pen and paper games like i want to sit down with a group of people and hash out these scenarios um i, I never thought of myself as like like a fantasy pen and paper type person i just don't know if i have the commitment to that but like a zombie type one or something more maybe grounded in reality i know that sounds really strange when comparing to zombies like i want to do something like that and it got me pumped up to do that and i think this is a good example of like in the past board games transitioned to video games you played board games and then people got interested in video games this is this is like the missing link almost you know and it's come out like way far in advance is if you've been playing video games you play this game and then it makes you want to play board games so i mean that's kind of what i think people need uh, to transition either way you know Mm. um but i got but i got excited but also sad because like there's not a whole lot of people around to play those games at convenient times uh, i've got an idea for you morning i've got an idea for you 
hmm. um, a new video series for you. Um, we'll call it Tabletop Jackass, where you <laughs> just basically go out in public, film yourself, and <laughs> act like you're in the middle of a tabletop pen and paper RPG with these people and just like start giving them orders or start like like acting out scenarios with them that they didn't know they were a part of. If I didn't live in Germany, <laughs> I would I would I would try that. Um, but unfortunately people give me weird looks for smiling and laughing for no apparent reason when I'm oh. listening to podcasts. I don't know how well that would work out. Um, Maybe I'll but, try it at Gen but, Con. Well I, I think it's worthwhile. I mean I think it's I think it's worth trying in, in a in a, a nation that is not as um Oh, I would say not as uh, defensive of their mm-hmm. emotions because um, we love everybody in America. Uh, <laughs> here, you have to actually like put effort into making friends with someone before they'll trust you. You know that's how, you know. Well, we've liked everybody in know. America since Mad Men since the sixties. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> since the 60s. exactly. Yeah, back then it wasn't it wasn't the same. Um, but I, I, I mean, go out and, and play this game. Like, wow, it was it was cool that's as hell. Interesting. And, I don't yeah, know where I mean, you pulled it, this one out of, man. That was. Uh, I just saw you streaming early in the morning. I'm like, and what is he? And he's playing a tabletop game. I yeah. Like I, I need I need a lot of caffeine before I can understand what's happening right here. But, <laughs> well, it, it was it was, was funny because cool. I was like narrating the whole. The yeah, whole you were. As I was playing. And the cool thing great. about it though is one one aspect of the game that's really interesting is it actually creates a diary for you. So like after you go through the scenario, like it. it every move that you've done, it actually you know creates a little story. So you have the diary of your gameplay session. And mm. that that's cool right there. I mean, it's not you know it's not like you're writing a novel, but it's it's kind of interesting to go back and say, oh, this is what ha- like this is why everyone died and that kind of stuff. So, um, a lot of cool ideas with that game. Like really some really great things. And and again, it was it was the perfect game to complement my uh, my viewing of World War Z. I think uh, two different types of zombies, but still uh, still good nonetheless. So, um, yeah, go go pick that fucking game up you know, <laughs> now. <laughs> I'm being demanding tonight. That's my thing. I'm not being mean, but I'm being nope. demanding. <laughs> What's a safe uh, house? Uh, I, I guess it's a. It's a. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he got really into it. Yeah, I kept saying it. And I was like, it, you feel like you're saying something wrong. Um, so uh, apparently, safe uh, safe house diaries have probably has probably been taken. So they would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just with We have to redo my artwork if we do that. <laughs> Uh, let's see, what have I been doing? The The new game this week uh, that Coop and I played was Gun Monkeys. Uh, huh. So this is just it's a $9 game, so yeah. keep that in mind. But it's a procedurally generated uh, one-on-one deathmatch game. Uh, just monkeys with guns, vector graphics, ragdoll physics, uh, lots of blood, a um, British commentator, uh, random weapons, and... The trick to this game is that uh, the deaths don't really matter. They penalize you, but it's all about you basically have this like generator that you need to keep full of power, and all these little cubes um, start dropping randomly throughout the level, and you have to go pick them up and rush them back to your generator to keep it full of power. And um, if you get shot, you drop your cubes and your th- your... Uh, it takes a while to respawn, and the entire time it's burning power, and the other guy's collecting um, his his power cubes and powering his generator. Um, and whoever runs out of power first loses. So that's actually it. Took us two rounds to figure out that that's why we were losing because Coop and I were playing this and just shooting the hell out of each other and blowing each other up with mines and uh, trying to get used to how the platforming works because it's really floaty. You kind of you can cling to ledges, you can jump up walls. Um, but by the end of it, we were having fun because we had a couple good tug of war matches where I thought I had the thing in the bag and he came back and I ended up winning. And then we stopped playing, uh, when my game froze, uh, because we got to the, he was just about to beat me, which I think I actually went undefeated in like five matches. But in this last match, the power, the, I was running back to my generator and it was going, counting down to zero and the the connection lag must have been to the point where I saved it with like one energy left on my screen, but it triggered that he won on his screen. So oh. 
So he's like on chat saying, I won, I won. And I'm like watching this game and shooting him. And then I win and it tells me I won. And then it just didn't know how to like drop us back into the lobby after that point. But uh, it, <laughs> it's only been out for like a week. Uh, it's definitely very, very indie indie game, but it's got a, it's got a nice little personality. Um, and if you're looking for like a one-on-one game and you're, uh, you got a couple of buddies that are into that, um, it, I can see it filling a niche there, but it's a very small niche. It, it just, it didn't do anything that made it like stand out or be fun, be hilarious or be awesome in, in any specific way. Um, but we had fun with the competitive nature side of it, but there's just, I, th- I feel like there's a lot of other games that kind of fill this void too. So, um, mm. as fun as the, as the, the, the name sounds, it, it just, it, it was, it was okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've noticed a lot of those kind of games, kind of uh, especially in Steam Greenlight, it seems like people are kind of moving in that direction, and I don't think that's one of those. Uh, I mean, just like you said, like that's. I don't think we need too many of those games, you know. Uh-huh. Like I, I kind of think about yeah. the same thing with MOBAs. Like I feel like everybody wants to make a MOBA now, and I feel like you know, a couple MOBAs is fine, but you don't need a bunch of MOBAs. I yeah, know. yeah, definitely. Um, and it, this just needs it needs a, it needs a single player campaign to go along with it. It's just out there on its own for 10 bucks as a, just a pure multiplayer experience. Um, I, what I did think was kind of neat was I hadn't played a game that ties into basically steam groups and steam chat rooms because it just, it had us just join our group and anybody that had the game and was in your groups. Like we, we used the horrible night group on steam and that's how we, we found each other in the lobby and were able to challenge each other to play games. So there could be that's cool. Theoretically, yeah, just people hanging cool. out and that, and you're just, you know, that's how you're swapping games and playing with a big group. So, um, uh, that that was it, that was interesting, but it just it seems like the groundwork for something bigger for an indie developer. It was just like they wanted to, you know, experiment with procedurally generated levels and you know online deathmatch and you know uh, net code for for that sort of thing. And you know they put kind of a humorous skin on top of it, but um, you know. I, I, you can see that leading to something bigger, but this uh, this game is kind of forgettable. So, hmm. but um, then just a, another another big winner uh, from last week was Deadpool. <laughs> 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 I played about three three hours of this total. Um, chat even gave up on the game. Uh, I man, I I tried to I tried to really like this game. Even I, I think I even had an upbeat attitude. At the end of the game, curious video that uh, that I that I did, and um, like immediately after I cut off the game, curious there became there just like this hilarious boss fight and this hilarious outro from the boss fight, and just weird shit starts happening in, in Deadpool's world, and um, I was like, yeah, do more of this. If you just like throw variety at me for no reason, this could be fun. But the problem is, you just have generic combat in the in between all of the fun. Um, kind of aesthetic layer to it because the Deadpool character is voiced really well and he's funny and the game is just, I mean, it's just the, the humor is in your face. You'll either like it immediately or hate it immediately. Um, but it sticks, it sticks to it, which I really appreciated. And, uh, once cable shows up, uh, kind of a couple hours in the back and forth between Deadpool and cable is pretty funny. Um, and I really like, I enjoyed all the quips. I enjoyed all the, the dumbness of the game. But man, mm-hmm. that that combat—it's not bad, but there's, it is just a, it is boring to play through, and then just random random enemies will show up that are just bullet sponges that just take the yeah. just suck the life out of it, and if you die, the checkboard pointing is kind of questionable, and you just have to replay long sections, and, and it's just like this game hinges on the personality, so just let it just let it go, like nobody is yeah. playing this game for a challenge so don't why even fake it why even just throw these little roadblocks at me let's just blow shit up laugh at it and just be done with it and give me this game for 25 bucks like i was surprised yeah i was surprised at the price because it just kind of popped up i mean i know people have been talking about it, but it just kind of popped up i just saw the trailer maybe two weeks ago which i gotta say the trailer completely turned me off and i love deadpool but i just i was like yeah this i don't know if we need another I don't know. I just I like the character Deadpool is is interesting yeah. in terms of like the universe, but in terms of a game, like you're not bringing any new mechanics to it. He's got right. guns, he's got swords, and he can regenerate. Um, and that doesn't Does he really teleport make for a great in the game. comics. 
Is that a th- or is that? Just, I feel like a thing they might have added on for the game. Uh, that was uh, in the uh, X Men Origins okay. uh, Wolverine. He when they introduced the Deadpool character there, which they completely ruined him. Um, <laughs> they uh, he could teleport because he was a you know conglomeration of all the different mutants that had been absorbed. But like, oh. but I like him comic wise. I think he'd make a great movie. Uh, video game wise, like, yeah, eh, you know, it was why, it was why, just why like go for it. It was just like Activision filling a uh, Marvel quota. Like we need to make X number of Marvel games and. You know, Deadpool sounds like a fun idea, and it, you know, there was nothing wrong with it. This was High Moon Studios, the guys that did the Transformers games. Yeah, like the foundation is solid. It's just, yeah. it just as much for as much personality it has, like I said, in the on the aesthetic side, it has absolutely none or negative. Yeah. So in the gameplay department, and yeah, um, so it was it was like ten bucks cheaper than like a full release. Um, I think across the board, um, and. But it's just really it's there's there's not enough there. Like w- watch for it, God, watch for it when it drops to budget price and then play it on easy and just just sprint through it if you like Deadpool at all and can get in get into yeah, like Nolan North's version of it. it. Yeah, I regretted playing it on medium just because no, I just want to just go. I don't. Yeah, uh, I just want to see the next thing because you know all of a sudden he might be riding a u- unicorn or a. T- white tiger or whatever he was doing or playing yeah. in an 8-bit game and um so i gave you know i i kind of i just kind of winged it because i wanted to get i wanted to kind of support what high moon studios was doing but i think activision has since laid off a bunch of those people and it just seemed like a, a game that they got out in this quarter because they had to and uh Activision will do that. They will just they'll try to get behind a game, but if it's not turning out, they're still gonna put put it out the door, kind of like X Men Destiny and like. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of unfortunate because if they had been able to develop some sort of gameplay hook to the game, it, it could have been it could have been fun or memorable. But now it's just you know harmless comic book game. So yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's see. We're kind of running along here. Um, as for The Last of Us, all I kind of want to say, I'm still playing that three quarters of the way through it. And Aaron, I'll let you uh, speak to the game a little bit because I know you finished it. But man, all right. I, I cannot play that game for more than 60 <laughs> or 90 minutes at a time. It's just, it is so heavy. It is just, and I get, I really get into it. Like, th- I, I don't. I don't think this this will impact every player of the game, but like I really, I don't know. I really identify with Joel. They've done just a really great job with that character. Uh, just for, you know, you don't really understand his motivations. And I don't think he does either. And I just really like that setup. That he's just he's just kind of doing the next thing that he thinks he needs to do s- to survive. And just something's happened that game, and you don't know if that was the right thing to kill that dude. But it's just like. You know him or us, man, and that just—that's just kind of the yeah. the the that just a movable force that pushes you through that game. And um, I'm I'm still I'm actually really enjoying the combat. It's kind of predictable as far as you can. They kind of telegraph when okay, now you're going to go to an action sequence versus you're scavenging, um, and that can get a little bit repetitive. But it's done so well uh, and just just crafted so well that uh, it's hard to fault it for it. And it is an amazing game, and it's gonna stick with me for a really long time. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it through. Yeah, you you're really close. You should definitely finish that game off as soon as possible. Just <laughs> just, just get get all the the heavy sadness out <laughs> of playing The Last of Us. It is. I'm surprised. Like you said, you can only play for like an hour, or hour and a half at a time. But I would sit there for hours. Just trying to like, I wanted to finish this game before someone like, on the internet yeah. spoiled it for me, and I would sit there for hours. And I mean, holy shit! Just to even talk about the intro, um, I when I think of it in my head, I'm like, oh, it's kind of a very cliche kind of, you know, the outbreak is beginning. You know, here's here's the character. He's got a daughter, but then things play out, and unlike Ethan, who knows no tears, I was like, am I go- about to, you know? start sniffling when the game's only been going for like 30 minutes <laughs> it, oh that fucking intro man like i okay i'm really i'm really i'm really curious with the walking dead 400 days coming out this week yeah by the way by the way that's fucking come out this week oh shit yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm curious Surprise. to see 
how much I like The Walking Dead after playing The Last of Us. I've heard that. That is, you were not the per- first person that said that. Um, Damn it. No. <laughs> yeah, you're being revelatory no, right now. This is unique content. I, I, dude, I, that was like I haven't played it yet, but my little brother was talking about it, and he kind of said the same sort of thing. Um, like, if with, and I think people are gonna know like how much like The Walking Dead. We're not taking anything away from The Walking Dead, right? No. But just to imagine The Walking Dead with gameplay that was a engaging. bit more engaging. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah. Like holy shit! Like so, we're not saying you know, uh, Walking Dead sucks, but. What, what's the next level of Walking yeah. Dead? Like, what could you do with that? Survival yeah. instinct. That's what. <laughs> I will say, I have managed to avoid every spoiler in terms of Last of Us. So I'm, like, really happy right now. So what, yeah, what's your plan? Like, are you, do you think you're going to be able to play it in the next year, or what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm working on some stuff. I'm, right. I'm, I'm working on putting the, uh, the place, because as far as I'm concerned, my computer could explode any day now, so I'll need yeah. something, but um, I just yeah. need to uh, get, get stuff together. Uh, but I'm, I'm, that's, I mean, why I we're, that's why we're training Aaron to be able to fill in for you on this podcast. Oh, so. yeah, we have, yeah. To have, <laughs> we have to have something, something in case of, of I need of people emergency. to talk to, damn it. <laughs> But no, I'm really looking forward to it. And again, my little brother, who was being very anti Last of Us um, early on, he was like, "Oh, oh yeah." Like he like he was talking about Uncharted Three, and he really liked Uncharted Three, but he just kept saying it was a movie, it was a movie, it was a movie. Yes, and he was did. like, "Last of Us is just going to be a movie." Mm-hmm. Uh, should I be excited? I was like, "I think you should be excited." But he was like, "Are you sure I should be excited?" I was like, "Well, I don't know for sure, but I don't know." And he got it. He was like, "Holy shit!" Like yeah. he was like, "I'm that fucking he, I'm fucking pumped." So I, th- that's a good I think uh, I think all the worries about the game were still kind of justified, but. It was really satisfying to see Naughty Dog pull it off again because it is yeah. it is an incredible incredible experience. So yeah, yeah it's such a strong game. I just you feel you feel like God. shit just playing it. <laughs> <laughs> from the from the technology side though, it's really amazing to just at the end of this console generation to just see a developer that literally knows every ins in and out of the PlayStation Three. Like it just knows mm-hmm. how like they. They pull off so many little shortcuts to make the game look amazing when it shouldn't. Like it, it just it's the yeah. one of the best looking games I've ever played, and it's still on that on that console. Like it's one of those few games that you know jumping back from a maxed out PC game that I don't have an issue jumping into this uh, into this world. It's it's it, you can almost just see them having fun with it because they can do things with that system that no other developer can do, and that's you know that's always the advantage of those. Um, kind of first party developers that they can they just get to know that system like it's their freaking child and um, man yeah they, uh, I just want to follow Naughty Dog to the grave when it comes to playing their games I could just what why, what will they do next gen I I just want I want them to get Legacy of Kane but that's just my dream so that, <laughs> that won't Someone happen should. yeah they need to do something fantastical though they've got realism down so they need to, I think they need to do something with magic or sci-fi or or just something you know supernatural maybe they yeah maybe they do like a comic booky type thing too uh, well they're making the progression i mean they went from somewhat crash bandicoot way yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's you know that's what they need did you ever see the uh the artwork or the like the um the early yeah. artwork for the potential jack and da- realistic jack and daxter game uh uh-uh. uh. No. It almost seemed like a joke, but there's some freaky renderings of like a realistic I Daxter. I don't want to. <laughs> that sounds scary. It's like the realistic Mario and Luigi's horrifying. <laughs> yeah. Um, last game I want to give a shout out to because I haven't been able to talk about this, but I did do a playthrough of Super Metroid, which was a new kind of stress for me to play a game I'm super familiar with, like in front of uh, a live audience on live stream. But I did see the game through, and I have to kind of relive my perfect ending to that game because I could never, ever pull this off again. Um, Metro games are kind of known for, you know, after you beat the boss, you've got to run out of this place before it blows up and you have a certain time limit. If you watch my attempt at exiting this game, realized, one, that I've probably beaten this game 25 or 30 times in my life, and two... I managed to choose 
every potential wrong way to go on my way out of this place. <laughs> I had I'm two lost. just like devastating falls that made me restart a jumping section. Um, oh. I got stuck. I didn't know how to open a door right from the beginning. Um, there's actually a portion where you can you, you meet some little creatures on the planet and you can save them too on your way out. I didn't have time to do that. But all of this... I still managed to make it to my ship. Like, you you jump on your ship, and you're just supposed to take the little elevator down in the ship, and you'll take off. I managed to make it on top of my ship with two seconds left, and I couldn't get her lined up to hit down to hit the elevator before the timer (laughs) went off. And it was just... I I could never pull that off again. Like, that was more impressive than, you know, me solving it in, like, half the time the next run. But it was... That was the absolute worst and best way to end that game. It was, um, it was, it kind of summed up a lot of um, all of my retro gaming recently. Is that I kind of know some stuff, but I'm still like a big danger to myself when I'm playing those games. So, um, by the way, Super Metroid still an awesome game, and it's amazing how thick the atmosphere still is for a game that old. Like it just, yeah. uh, they they. It's incredible. So yeah, it's like Nintendo knew what they were doing at one point. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah, they must have. They must have. All right, I think that's that's it for the. Are you not going to talk about Skyrim, dude? Do you want me to talk about Skyrim? I want to have a little bit of sky. Just quick. All right. Just a little, just, yeah, I want to see how you're feeling. I I, I just I sent. Uh, I do. I was pumped. I was pumped. Know, it, yeah, going, I sent Justin some uh, some some mods uh, after you know he had to ask me I think three or four times which is yeah. usually what he has to do to get anything out of me uh, sometimes but um, I have reminders on my phone to remind me to remind you <laughs> what's ha- what's happening in Skyrim dude Let's get oh Skyrim, I got pumped bro. up okay first of all you sent me the list of mods and that just like just enacted my confidence that yes I will I have this list of mods that I know will not crash my game and won't run like shit. Somebody I know that wouldn't put up with this bullshit has vetted these these mods for me. So uh, that was kind of fun. I um, I went through the Steam Workshop for the first time and just subscribed to the uh, half dozen mods that you recommended. Um, one of which made the game a little bit too dark. So I gotta like I ended up getting onto the you know the Nexus mods form or whatever that's called and getting a tweaked version of that. So nighttime isn't so I don't need a torch to get around at, yeah, at yeah, all yeah. points. But um, uh, once I made that adjustment, um, I just got heavy into it and it, the game looks incredible. Just a lot of the Vista stuff and the, what they do with the the fog rolling off the mountains, that kind of shit. Like, like we got I think it's the climates mod that's doing that, but. Um, that was just, it just, I was just looking at everything for the first hour and then no. trying to remember how the hell to play this game. Um, I just got completely lost and eventually did, um, <clears throat> did, uh, my first little dungeon and, uh, that, that kind of came, came back to me and made it to, made it to white run. Um, I, I told this story on top video game podcast, but I did make the mistake of killing a chicken. Um, I get, really? somehow... Like, this is, like, apparently well-known uh, that you do not kill chickens in Skyrim because... Don't you dare kill chickens. Oh, my God. Dude, they will kill you for that. I just... I, it's, it doesn't so make any sense. the Wild West, you can't steal yeah. a horse, they'll hang you. You know, that's... A chicken is a man's... I, guess, I don't know what... I don't, chicken's yeah. a man's horse. <laughs> I did it so <laughs> innocently. I did it so innocently. And, like, and after the fact, like, the way my save point, my checkpoint worked... I mean, they killed me once, but they, the checkpoint... Was at the point that the ch- the chicken was already dead, so the town was just pissed at me, and like, so I tried to run away, and like the after I killed the shopkeeper because I in self defense, like the blacksmith and the blacksmith's wife chased me out of town for miles and won't leave me alone, and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have to kill your wife. And why would you kill him? He's a beefy beefcake. Why wouldn't you take him? Well, out? he was uh, he, like like he was attacking me, so he was gonna die no matter. Like I didn't have a problem killing him. Like he had oh, weapons gotcha. and was coming at me, but I was like, "Lady, please just just go. Just I, you, it doesn't have husband. to end this way." And then, yeah. yeah, if you killed one, you gotta kill them kill them both. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, that was pairs. that was traumatic. I'm working on that highlight clip, but that was. <laughs> I don't know how, like, out of like all the Skyrim memes that I didn't pick up on the chicken one, that that that's a th- 
just such a deadly sin. Um, but, um, yeah, I killed the first dragon, and then I'm going to try to sprint through the early part of the story and then just go explore. But, man, I could I, I could drop so much time in that game so quickly if I'm not careful. So I'm, I'm trying to finish, you know, Last of Us and before I get too heavy into it. But it's it could eat, my, eat up my summer if uh, that's, that's kind of where I'm headed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I have somebody to talk about because I've, I've I haven't played it for a while. I've kind of taken a step back because I was losing my identity to Skyrim again. Um, but the weird thing is, like, people will still talk about Skyrim on the internet. Like, you know, there's a lot of games that kind of have their moment in the sun, and then people mm. move on. People are still loving loving up on Skyrim. So coming up on two years, Skyrim um, going strong. And, and just to add, anybody that's playing Skyrim on PC, and if you have to get any mod if to to put into it, it's the um, the climate mod, I think. Climates of Tamriel. The climate mod. Oh my god, that does so much to the game. It's it's yep. unreal. It's that's I can't. I yeah. Anytime I talk about Skyrim, that's what I want to go go do. So try to play that on. You have it on Xbox too, don't you? Yeah. Hey, have you gone from PC to Xbox just to like PC with mods to oh, Xbox yeah, just I to could, look at it? I should. Well, so when I played it on 360. I played it when there was that bug that the high res textures weren't actually like I had them loaded, but they mm-hmm. wouldn't actually work. So yeah. I'm making a pretty big leap as far as the graphics yeah. go. But yeah. I, there's also I think there's a way to actually port the save. I gotta see if that still works because because be yeah cool. I've got like a you know I'm probably I'm halfway done with the story. I've got like a level I want to say I don't know mid twenties thirty level thirty character maybe but. Yeah. Um, so starting over was kind of daunting. If I can get through this first part, oh, I also the little cheat. I don't know if you want to call this a cheat mod, but I did grab the the mod that highlights books that you haven't read yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll that's acceptable. That's yeah, useful. I think that yeah. Because I'll yeah. get lost in that because I like reading that stuff. So yeah. All right, uh, moving on to horrible night stuff. What are you guys actually working on on the site uh, as far as? Uh, maybe games you want to stream um, and our editorial stuff that we we are working on in the background. Um, I I for one I need to I need to I need to find a new retro game to play. Beat Super Metroid. I right now I'm debating on streaming one of the Game Boy Advance uh, Castlevania games. Like I thought about doing Symphony of the Night, but that seemed like everybody streams Symphony of the Night. Um, so I might do prob I forget the names of them now, but probably the second. A- Circle of the Moon. Uh, no, Harmony that's the of dissonance. Probably Harmony of Dissonance, because that's okay. like they did a little graphical leap between those two. Yeah, Circle of the did. Moon. Circle of the Moon, though. I don't know. I don't think that'll look all that good. But that game is hard and kind of rewarding to play. So I'm gonna yeah, see how they look. One. Yeah, um, Dude, yeah. I, I would watch that. I, I didn't. I missed out on all of the Game Boy uh, Castlevania games. So okay, um, I'd be into that. That could be. I. That could work. That could work. I've not um, seen Harmony, so I'd like to see that one in action. And then the other question is, I did start the Resident Evil remake and took a break from it. Uh, I also feel like, honestly, I feel like my character's in a really bad position as far as I've wasted a ton of ammo, <laughs> and I've learned how to play the game again. So do I restart, or do I continue from where I'm at? I think you have to. I think I think it's going to be a waste of your time if you've wasted that much ammo. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not... I, I'm not ready for the hunter to show up because I'm just fucked. Like, oh, you wasted that much. Oh shit. Yeah. No. 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 You need to start over. Yeah. Start over. It got bad. <laughs> <laughs> a good bad, but yeah. Start that game over. As far as modern games, I think I'm gonna try to finish my playthrough of Tomb Raider. I think that's kind of my ongoing single player game. But um, we also need to pick a. Now that the Dickfish video is in the bag. <laughs> we need to pick another um, Ho Night Game Night game and uh, get yeah. that publicized. So um, be on the lookout for that. Um, what are you guys thinking streaming wise? Maybe Ethan. Um, well, you know I have. Um, uh, I'm celebrating Fourth of July in a, a special way. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of streaming, and I, I think that actually tonight Rogue Legacy kind of became my go-to <laughs> quickie game. Yeah. Um, and. But I also downloaded Baldur's Gate and Dust and Elysian Tale. Um, and I actually, oh. I, I kind of want to do a playthrough of Dust because I gave Dust a bunch of shit uh, <laughs> for very just superficial reasons. And I do apologize. It looks like a great game. Um, 
I was yeah. just being a dick because sometimes people are dicks, but I'm, I'm trying to change that um, because I watched a trailer for that again like maybe last week, and I think maybe the trailers I watched earlier just didn't – I just wasn't paying attention. Oh, my I – mean, holy shit. That's a fucking gorgeous game. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. In, insane, and, and that's a – I think that will be a, a solid game to do that. But Baldur's Gate – like I missed that game. Like I never played that game. I want you to play Baldur's Gate. If and, I had to yeah, play. and that's and – that's <laughs> yeah, like, I want to see that. I, I, that's what, yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking at. Like, I'm looking at kind of a big... I was going to stream a bunch of different games on Thursday, but, like, watching the Baldur's Gate trailer, I was like, well, this may be one of those games that I just I just play this one, you know? Um, but uh, but I'm getting more consistent with these, so I actually, I today I try to switch between multiple games, which doesn't always play out as well as you'd think. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I think still... I, I, I've made, like, a new uh, friend on stream... Or on uh, Steam, <laughs> Aww. on stream, stream on Steam, Steam. Th- for Borderlands Two, uh, my, my my buddy Steam streamers, <laughs> Steam streamers, we're here for you. Um, Google Boo, he he and I Steam have been playing. He's from streaming. He's from the uh, Netherlands, and uh, I think he and I are going to keep playing some games together and probably cool. play some Borderlands 2 more. So, yeah, no, definitely. There's uh, We'll be streaming a lot more. I think I've got a lot of my, – most of my computer issues have been worked out. So we should Nice. Play. Aside from this one webcam-related podcast. You know what? Show. Yeah, and that's going to be <laughs> – that's just stupid. Yeah, it's just <laughs> really stupid. Stream on, steaming friends. Oh, just Cause 2. <laughs> Holy shit, that oh, came back in a big way. Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, there's a bunch of mods, actually, that uh, oh, shit, we're going to load up for Thursday. Um, okay. Dude, why I, why have we not been playing that game? I forget why. Hey, I played it a while back, but yeah, I don't know. I, I see. Yeah, I, I need to get... Yeah, so that'll be another one that's going to be featured. A lot of so games... Yeah, I'm going to basically play games on Thursday until I, I can't do it anymore because I'm... <laughs> we're not guaranteeing a 24-hour <laughs> live stream, but it's it's yeah. until Ethan's done. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. So it could be two hours or it could be 30. <laughs> it could be 30 minutes. It could be a solid 30 minutes depending on what I'm doing. No, it'll be more than that. It'll be at least, at least an hour. <laughs> well, you're looking at like 10 a.m. Eastern. That was the estimate right now. Yes, 10 a.m. Okay. Eastern. Um, and right. we'll be just going through it. I mean, definitely tell people to come in and come and chit-chat and just have some fun I mean, because I know not you're out of the barbecue. July. You're out of barbecue. Go, go, go rent a projector. And just yeah. <laughs> put it up for the family to watch. And I, I um, don't expect anybody in America to be there. I, 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 like I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like I'm fine with that. I mean, get up early I'll maybe and support me. But uh, yeah, I'll show up randomly and chat on my iPad and just make comments like I can see the sc- the stream. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, you working on anything? Well, I know Aaron, your your streaming plans are kind of. They're upcoming. We're still figuring yeah, out your. Yeah, they're very your... tentative. I'm uh, I'm debating actually starting a stream tomorrow. Where just because it's a fun thing to do, I might play Rogue Legacy, and offer my perspective of the game. I'm a little far there, and uh, there's like four bosses. So Justin, <laughs> beat that eyeball. Maybe yeah. I can defeat. I believe it's a skull or something of some sort. I did attempt it once. I like I like the idea of tag teaming Rogue Legacy. You get the second boss. Ethan will get the third boss. We'll convince Coop to get the fourth boss. Um, <laughs> oh, the third boss sounds tough. And then we that. will all stream from our own channels to try to race to beat the fifth one. <laughs> that is <something>. amazing. <laughs> So yeah, we could do something like that, or, or I can just go through my backlog. I've got some games I can play, so at some point I'll try to get more regular. But I might, you know, dip a foot in tomorrow, cool. do some Rogue Legacy. But I need to get back into the habit of writing gotta... radio waves. I've fallen off with E3. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> big. You were close. Yeah, I was so E3, close. E3, it fucked us all up though. I, I got it. I like I'm still reeling from E3. I don't know what the deal was, we but were... yeah. We were close to being in a groove again right before yeah. E3, and then it just, yeah. So yeah. I got wrecked. Uh, Sony, Big T, Big Daddy Trenton <laughs> just <laughs> dropped Jack's some bombs fault. on me, and yeah, I had no idea how to respond. He threw a mic, and I was like, well, fuck, I can't write. <laughs> but I'll get back into that. I'll try to get some reviews down. Justin and I can knock out some checkpoints. Yeah. Yeah, checkpoints. Animal Crossing. We'll talk about stuff. I'm, what was I'm, the other game we were going to talk about? We we're going to do Animal... I feel like Bioshock there's Infinite. Oh, we finish? need Bioshock. to talk about Bioshock. Game. I'm telling you, Justin, finish that fucking game before you finish Last of Us. Because, like, Josh Lee and I talked about it for, like, a little bit before a podcast. <laughs> and we had to shut up as soon as you came on. Because <laughs> oh, man. 
Yeah, we need to talk about that. I've actually thought about now, at this point, might be safe to actually stream that entire game. So maybe that'll push me yeah. through it. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think, but I think it might have been a last. Uh, we'll probably do a Last of Us checkpoint actually. If I yeah, uh, I want to be part of that, but I can't. Oh God, I hate not live. <laughs> no, Ethan, have you you got anything mm, written word wise that you're working on? Oh man, I've got a bunch of stuff. I've I actually have um, two things that we're working on, and I just I I again I apologize to everybody that comes a horrible night. I have been a just a not lazy, but I've been I've string strung myself between like a bunch of different projects. So we had the Oculus Rift video that's sitting there that is just a monster to edit right now. <laughs> um, we definitely want to get that out because it was a lot of fun. It was a great session. If and you it got me really it, excited for it. If you need any audio samples of random men screaming dickfish, I have that library. <laughs> I, you know what, I, I, I may take you up on that. It just, it's right. just gonna be, I'm trying to decide right now how, um, you know, how well edited that is going to be. How, you know, are we going to? I don't know. It just, it, it it's going to be interesting. But um, that's just one of those things sitting there. And then Michael Stearns and I talked uh, last week, and trying to get that interview edited. And it's a really great interview. He is. Um, out of all the developers I've spoken to, I mean, the guy is just full of information, full <laughs> of opinions. It's it's great to talk to him, um, and I try to convince him to come on one of these shows one of these days. So we'll sure. see if that ever happens. But that's another nice. thing that's going to be coming up. Um, and then like um, there, there's a there's got there's a Brotabulus sitting there. There's a Brotabulus just looking uh, <laughs> looking at me from across Dude. the room. Um, I watched not sure exactly what it is. Oh man. I, I watched the the XCOM Brotabulous video the other day. That thing that thing gets to me, man. That is that is that I just, is a great piece of work. You, you the problem is like I can't keep watching those old ones because like <laughs> I think I almost hit a peak with XCOM because yeah. of the emotion behind it. Contra was good. Uh, mm-hmm. Contra Saints Row three was fine. Uh you, you know, it was a little bit maybe a little bit funnier. But after that, like there's very few time the very few games that you can get the same appeal in like you do from XCOM because literally like those dudes are dying for you, you know? Mm. <laughs> and uh, I just, yeah, that, that's going to be Why tough. Why won't we'll, you let we'll me? Be there. We'll I'm be about there. to die. Let me use my like <laughs> grenade with all this alien technology to <laughs> <Yeah>. save myself. <laughs> well, once, once Xeno knots, uh, once I can stream that, oh. uh, we'll probably get a little bit, a yeah. little bit out of that because I just, well, I can't say anything about it, but Look up Xenonauts right now. If you liked XCOM, look up Xenonauts. Like seriously, you're gonna be fucking so excited. It's gonna, you're gonna shit your pants. I was pretty happy with how my I did another video game memory leak. Just kind of a retro review on Qbert. Just the stuff that I didn't remember about the game, having played it 20, 30 years ago. Um, uh, and I'm, so I'm looking to do more of the retro stuff. I do want to find some more silly stuff. Like I, like I said, I want to bring back. Reply to walls. Figure out we can't have a weekly conversation with our writers um, because they're they're still out there. They're all working on stuff. I have I have drafts from both Cole and Gifford. It's true, um, and but also kind of find that way to bring back. I learned something today. It's still my favorite series on the site. Um, just um, but ha- start to have some fun with our writing. We've been doing a lot of game coverage, like serious serious stuff, and uh, I think our writing needs to. Um, have some more fun opportunities. But I say that, and the actual editorial I'm working on is the whole thing related to why I can't play Last of Us for more than 60 minutes at a time because <laughs> it's so heavy. So. It's, I mean, I don't know what it is. Like, It's been heavy. Gaming has been really heavy lately. I don't yeah. know what it is. Like, I think I don't know if it's the games we're playing or what, but it just seems like with the new generation, like the pressure has been on um and like we do we struggle like like our our in night force uh, a few weeks back like there was some anger and i think it was mostly because <laughs> of, uh, you know game of thrones but still like <laughs> I, I think like the summertime is good for us i think we're actually like smiling a little bit more we're a little bit more excited and i'm a lot more excited about video games right now just i mean now's the time to be relaxed about video games too and just enjoy yeah. them because yeah this is a lull right before um uh, a, a new generation of games starts and yeah. So get caught up on the games you want to play. Play the games you want to play. You want to play 100 hours of Skyrim this summer. I, I'm i behind you 100%. Do it. Have Just not on. Ethan because Take I need you to cover players. other games. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, as soon as I start feeling... Yeah, as soon as I tell Justin, yeah, I'm starting really getting back into games. He's like, okay, well, stay on top of the new games, you fucking asshole. Don't, 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 don't play Skyrim anymore. <laughs> 
All right, we get out of here with some random game pitches. Um, chat, if you have any just like blank descriptions you want us to run run with uh, as far as a game uh, a game idea goes, we'll we'll see where the tangents take us and try to define um, a few game concepts here. Aaron, I'm gonna let you start. You you don't really know where this is going, but your description makes me quite curious. <laughs> and that's when people get their grills out and they're gonna barbecue. So I'm hold on, hold on. I need game. you. Hold on. I need you to start okay. over because I think the audio cut out. You, you start oh, no. start fresh. Give us your your pitch here. Okay, so it's summertime. People are getting their grills out and. What better time to introduce a game about a barbecue sauce adventure where you just you can go out, you'll gather a party people and just make the ultimate barbecue sauce and you can get all sorts of just, you can just go wild with that. Like Telltale can make it or it could just be like a, a third, you know, a third person just kind of. You grilling adventures? Yeah, just grilling adventures. You gather all the ingredients you need to make the ultimate barbecue sauce. You fail along the way. You learn a little bit about yourself and life. <laughs> Maybe you, you run into Paula Dean. That's topical. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the game, you you either have a good barbecue sauce or you don't. Good ending. Oh, it can, oh it's you have the choices. You're, yeah, oh, that's like a moral choice. system. You have a yeah. good ending or a bad ending. Yeah, good sauce wow. or bad sauce ending. <laughs> Oh man! Maybe, Dude, maybe I, a little neutral in there where people are like, "It tastes like you bought it from the store." So who cares? <laughs> it's okay. I prefer rub. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, I, I looked at the note. I was like, "What the fuck is he gonna do with this?" And you, I'm convinced. I I would kickstart that. I'd get, I'd throw fucking fifteen dollars towards you for that game. That sounds it, great. Yeah, it's Ethan, a great you... vehicle to introduce the world to cockwine too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, have a man, good barbecue the, and a glass the horrible coffee. night product placement that we can do in these types of games that would be oh, it's unbelievable. unbelievable Ethan where do you think the barbe- the misadventures of barbecue sauce where does that take you um, where does it take me or where does it take the, the main protagonist of the game I just, just go just <laughs> because go. it takes me to hunger town yeah, I, <laughs> I apologize you know obviously I think you, you're going to have to really deal with the uh, barbecue trail you know you're going to have to you know go what kind of barbecue are you, you you focusing on? You know, like real Southern barbecue, um, Kansas City, St. Louis. I mean, Bar- yeah. barbecue you know, sauce manager. No, I'm picturing like <laughs> that, vinegar that's, based. You that's know, at the I beginning mean, of the game, you choose your origin. <laughs> are you Southern? Are you Midwestern? Are you like some you know know nothing guy from Maine or something? Yeah. <laughs> you just really want to yeah. learn about barbecue. Your name is Kent Stevenson, a no-nonsense hotshot from Maine. <laughs> they know you for lobster. You're here for the barbecue. I'm, I'm, in. I'm in. There's so much opportunity. Yeah. I, as long as Ethan gets to do the character development, I, I'm in. <laughs> All right. Um, chat has a recommendation. Uh, Top Gun Beach Volleyball came. I am a huge fan of Super Spike Volleyball. Yep. Uh, yes. But it was way too heterosexual for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they somehow need to incorporate the soundtrack from Top Gun, and uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it somehow has to be you're it's playing be a this montage. Yes, yeah. it's um, a pure montage you're... game. <laughs> Tough to play. Impossible to play. Even. But... It's impossible to play. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is the is the objective of the game to like? Win over spectators or turn on the other team. That's kind of my. <laughs> or question. make everybody uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> if this video game can make your your mother stop vacuuming the living room long enough to pay attention, to this that's pull her glasses down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dude, this, I was thinking the same thing. The sunglasses down, double take. Huh? <laughs> um. I also, like that game. <laughs> I think now's as good a time of any, though, to uh, let's make our perfect 4th of July video game. And prepping for Ethan's fight for freedom on Thursday, um, we really couldn't find that standout explosion-filled fireworks patriotism game. Mm-hmm. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's make it. Let's, uh, what does it need to have in it? Was it wasn't Assassin's Creed 3 just basically 4thofjulygame.com? <laughs> 
I don't know. It's not really exactly pro pro America. So yeah, it's really not um, <laughs> pro America. I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, we're pro America. We're not pro American government. You know, let's just make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we need a and, and maybe this is too topical. Maybe we need an uh, an Edward Snowden adventure, uh, which, which involves him. You know, it's like where in the world is Edward Snowden? It's like where in the world is Carmen San Diego? But um, <laughs> you don't have to answer questions. You just use your government's uh, ability to spy on people to. <laughs> track him down you send out um, drones yeah but uh, but i was i see um but if you want the true patriotism that defines what america truly is and not what our government is representing us as right now um you need you need to find and fight for freedom and you need to do it against aliens okay <laughs> I, I i think that you know um it's been wow geez can, right now it's been it's been 17 can freedom, years can freedom be the name of your kidnapped daughter uh, Freedom America, and your name, yeah. is, your name is John Quincy America. <laughs> Freedom, where'd you? Freedom, yeah. Oh man, it could be intense. Um, it's probably set in the '80s because okay. things were better back then. Um, and you, you're no nonsense. You're from Maine. Um, and you love barbecue sauce. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a huge tie-in. So this is a side story <laughs> to the barbecue adventure. It's a side story, yeah. It, 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 it's actually it's how you make a side all American, man. from the barbecue. Kind of thing. <laughs> all, Ameri- be- all American barbecue adventure. I mean, that's as, as how, how Fort July can you get? I mean, barbecue, <laughs> beer, freedom, John Quincy Adams. Or, I mean, excuse me, John Quincy America. John Quincy America. Um, aliens. <laughs> aliens. I mean, when was the last time so, the world wait, really came so- together? What did the aliens do to the barbecue festival to inc- incite this? Uh, they showed up and they just uh, they shot up. laser beams down for no apparent reason. Uh, I just and, want, and- I just want <laughs> the shot of a dude about to take a big bite of like barbecue chicken and it being like shot out of his hand with uh, some sort of alien technology. He looks up straight up in the sky <laughs> and goes, "Oh my!" <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, everyone's like, wait, we got it when you came back in '96, and you like killed everybody to get our resources. But, but we're just enjoying a good time. So not only are you aliens like fucking capitalistic, but you're fucking huge dicks as well. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually what the sequel to, to Independence Day is about: is the aliens couldn't take down our big cities, so they're going to take down our barbecue. And uh, what they <laughs> didn't realize was that was the biggest motivating factor for Americans to date. <laughs> Is we love our barbecue and you fucking take we it from did. us, you're gonna you're gonna die. You're gonna you know. Wait, it's the exact same setup, except the yeah, their giant ships are positioned over barbecues and not monuments. <laughs> over City. people's backyards and parks. <laughs> well, we've definitely got the. Uh, I think we've got the, the the movie of this video game. <laughs> um. So is this is this a modern game? Is this a contra shooter? What is what? What are we picturing? What's what's JQ America? Um, how's he That's, taking care of business? Oh man, third person perspective, but okay. no cover, no cover mechanics. <gasps> Free, gone, can we, can John we, can Q we, America doesn't need cover. He doesn't. Can we bring back like Freedom Fighters style? Because oh man, yeah, fuck yes, we can. Freedom Fighters versus aliens, like organizing. Yes. Yeah. So so Should they have destroyed our barbecues a long time ago. And somehow like the barbecue like having a barbecue like in a public area is like a symbol that this area is no <gasps> longer under alien control. Oh my god. <laughs> so he, okay. Can can I build the opening scene yeah. up? Here's the opening sure. scene. <laughs> 20 years in the future. All barbecues have been uh, eliminated. Uh, aliens have taken over, uh, and everyone's like, "Well, we might as well give up. We're we're no longer humans. We're just fucking cattle. We're we're cattle. They're using us for food." And then uh, they're like, you, "There's no hope." And they look they look over to a bridge, uh, and on the bridge is in flames is a barbecue. Well, it's just a barbecue pit on on the bridge. Um, and then J.Q. Adams is standing atop this bridge, um, and he says, "Bane." Or wait, no, not Bane. Um, <laughs> but, aliens. <laughs> and that's all he says. And then it, it, it shifts into 20 years ago. And then you see uh, when the barbecues were killed, but also the side story of uh, when uh, Amer- uh, his, 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 young, his young daughter was taken from him. Um, Poor America. America. And, and she's, uh, he thinks she's dead. And he wants revenge, uh, finds out halfway through the game she's not dead. 
she actually has been converted to an alien human hybrid. So then oh, now you're tugging strange. some heartstrings. Do you pick family or do you pick freedom? Well, I guess that would be the same thing. Do you pick freedom? And, <laughs> do you pick freedom and family, or do you pick your country? I mean, John Q's got a lot of decisions to make. Or do you uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna spoiler alert. I'm gonna go ahead and say that if you choose to save her, she actually, because of her human alien hybrid skills, she becomes the, the like the best barbecue chef the world has ever known. Yeah, it's a good Pretty ending much. either way. Yeah, that's the yeah. That, spoiler alert. Sorry for the other side of it. If I mean, you don't save her, she, she comes back. The, ba- the bad ending is that everybody has barbecue. The, <laughs> the good ending, the good ending is that everybody has better barbecue. Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. Well, it's not. Then we just have to fill in the game in between that. That's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Night Force action report is going to get out of here. We're going to be back every Tuesday. Um, on Twitch TV. We record these live, but you can also subscribe to us on iTunes uh, from HorribleNight.com. Uh, if you like the show, uh, leave us a rating, leave us some comments, or come hang out and chat. Uh, and Aaron, Ethan, thanks for hanging out tonight. Um, I'm going to go have some barbecue. So Freedom! Mm. Freedom! <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Do the dishes, please. <laughs> Clean your room. <laughs>